OK, we've been graphing quadratic equations. In fact, we started with this very simple one first, y equals x squared. And we found that if we graph this, it makes a beautiful uh, symmetrical U-shaped graph centered at x equals 0. All the actions happening down there at x equals 0. And then we started playing with the steepness of these things. We graphed things like y equals 2x squared. And we actually saw that's still a symmetrical U-shaped graph, but now it's going to be a bit steeper. In fact, it be twice as steep in some sense. It's a steeper symmetrical U-shaped graph. Still all the actions happening at x equals 0. Whoops, x equals 0. But again, it's another symmetrical U-shaped graph, just a steeper version. And then we started playing with, oh, well, let's start changing where all the action's happening. So having, having all the action at x equals 0, maybe we have all the actions ha happen at x equals 4. So we started graphing things like this, y equals x minus 4 squared. I'm now making the number 4 behave like 0, in which case the graph would be, all right, it will be the same graph here, but now all the action's happening at x equals 4. The number 4 is behaving like 0, so now I get this symmetrical U-shaped graph, now it's put over here. But the point is, it's still another symmetrical U-shaped graph. And then we start doing things like, well, let's bump everything up by 6. Let's actually make every data point 6 higher. Let's add 6. In which case, we saw earlier that actually it's going to be the same graph we just did there, but now all the data values are 6 higher. So actually, it's the same symmetrical U-shaped graph here, but everything's been up, bumped up 6 units in the data. So now I get a symmetrical U-shaped graph, but over here now. So every graph we've been drawing so far has been a symmetrical U-shaped graph. Now here's the amazing thing. Textbooks want to say every quadratic equation, whatever quadratic equation you choose to graph, is sure to be a symmetrical U-shaped graph, just like these ones here. To which I say, whoa, really? Every graph, no matter what I choose for A, B, and C, is guaranteed to be a, guaranteed to be a symmetrical U-shaped graph? I actually find that really quite unbelievable. And let me show you why I think that is really hard to believe. Let me do this example. I don't believe that that's going to be symmetrical every single time. It just seems really odd. Here goes. Let's take the basic graph y equals x squared again. So let me draw it. I'll draw, try to draw a fairly decent version of it. y equals x squared. All the actions happening x equals 0. There's the x-axis. There's the y-axis. All right. And now let me try to draw something that's actually not symmetrical. Uh, let me draw uh, y equals 2x. I'll just, let me just draw a straight line graph, a straight line graph. So this is a straight line of slope 2, and it goes through the origins. It's a steep line through the origins, something like that. There's the y-axis, there's the x-axis. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, that's definitely not symmetrical. Um, you know, symmetrical means it's the same on the right as it is on the left, same on the left as it is on the right, so we've got that nice vertical symmetry there. This one's not the same on the right as it is on the left. In fact, it's kind of the complete opposite on the right. This has all like going up with positive values over here, but on the left, it's going down in negative values instead. So this is not symmetrical about the axis. But now, let me do this. Let me try to add these two graphs. And I'm not quite sure what that means. I just have to try to make sense of what I mean by that. But I want to take this graph and somehow add that graph together and combine them to get a new graph. All right, I do have an idea in my mind. I do have an idea. Here's my idea. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say, let's get rid of this one for the moment. I'm going to say, well, each point x you're interested in, so I might be interested in some point like here, uh, work out this height on this graph. At the same point x here, work out the height on this graph. And the, x, the same x point here actually work out the height of this plus that. So for example, literally, at x equals 1. At x equals 1, this has height of 1 squared, a height of 1. At x equals, x equals 1, this is a height of 2 times 1. That's a height of 2. So at x equals 1, I will draw a height of 1 plus a height of 2 to get a height of 3. I'll draw that point there at a height of 3. That's what I mean by adding these two graphs. In fact, what I'm really doing, I did the height of the x squared graph and the height of the 2x graph, and I added them together. I think I'm actually graphing that right now. But let me try another one. Let's try x equals 2. At x equals 2, this will be a height of uh, 2 times 2. 2 squared is 4. At x equals 2, this is a height of 2 times 2, which is also 4, which means at x equals 2, I want a height of, of uh, 4 plus 4 is 8. I want to go 8 high this time. There it is, height of 8. So let me just draw that. That's a height of 8. And check, at x equals 2, I get a height of 2 squared, 4, plus a height of 2 times 2 is 4. I really do get 8. 4 plus 4 is 8. Great. And x equals 3, I'll get a height of 9 over here. 
plus a height of 2 times 3 is 6 over here, which means I get a height of 9 plus 6, I get a height of 15 here. So it's really going up. So this graph on this side is definitely going up. Whatever this graph is, it's getting bigger as I go off to the right. Um, at 0, here I've got a height of 0. Here I've got a height of 0. 0 height plus 0 height. 0 height plus 0 height, at x equals 0, makes 0 height. So it's definitely going through the origins. OK, so on the right-hand side, it's definitely a graph going up. Now, what's interesting is on the left-hand side, the negative x values. Because I'm a little bit confused. This is where I think this is going to get confusing. Because if I do a negative value, I'm doing a positive height over here. And at the same x value over here, I'm doing a negative height over there. So maybe the positive heights and the negative heights cancel each other, and I get nothing. Maybe I get nothing. Maybe all the heights cancel each other on the left and I get nothing. Maybe the graph is just nothing on that side. Or maybe the positive heights outweigh the negative heights. So somehow the positive heights uh, beat the negative heights and maybe it just becomes a little positive over here. Maybe it goes positive. The positive heights win and they don't beat the negative heights. Or maybe, maybe the negative heights are bigger than the positive heights. I got more negative than I got positive. Maybe the whole graph goes negative over here. It's hard to tell what's going on, on the left-hand side. So I'm, not, so I'm pretty convinced it goes up on the right, but on the left, I don't know what it's doing. Does it go into the negatives, because all the negatives win? Maybe it's just zeros, maybe they balance, or maybe all the positives win. What's going on? How would you find out? Well, the way to find out is actually start plotting some points. So let's actually put in some uh, negative inputs. So let me draw a little data table. Uh, where am I going to put it? Let's put it up here. X, Y. Uh, at 0, we've got 0. We've got that much. But let me go into the negatives now, like negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 for X. So what's going on? So at X equals negative 1. And negative 1, I'll have Y equals negative 1 squared. That's a, a positive 1. Yep, positive 1, height of 1, plus 2 times negative 1, that's negative 2, that'll be negative 2. Uh, 1 plus negative 2 is uh, negative 1. Oh, it looks like it's going to the negatives. At negative 1, it's a height of negative 1. Okay, oh, so it looks like it is going down to the negatives. Uh, 8 x equals negative 2. Uh, negative 2 squared would be a height of 4, plus 2 times negative 2, that's oh, negative 4. Oh, 4 plus negative 4 is 0. They cancel. At x equals 2, negative 2, I have a height of 0. Well, that's curious. It went down, but now it looks like it's going back to 0. All right, at negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9, be a big height of 9, plus 2 times uh, negative 3, that's negative 6. 9 plus negative 6 is positive 3. Positive 3. So now it's going actually into the positives. At negative 3, I've got a height of positive 3. Oh. Uh, s equals negative 4. Let me do one more because this is interesting. At x equals negative 4, uh, height of uh, negative 4 squared, uh, negative 4 times negative 4 is 16, plus 2 times negative 4, and ne uh, negative 8. 16 plus negative 8 is 8, positive 8. At negative 4, it's actually positive 8. It's definitely becoming positive. Whoa! Whoa! And look at that! It looks like it wants to be one of our symmetrical U shaped graphs, which is mind blowing! Something is completely symmetrical. Add something to it that's like completely anti-symmetrical in some sense. And what comes out in the end is something symmetrical. Whoa! You try to ruin the symmetry and it doesn't get ruined. It still stays symmetrical. That's mind-blowing, at least to me. I think that's mind-blowing. Now, I wonder if I can actually prove that's true. Is this really one of our symmetrical U-shaped graphs that we're doing all along? And the answer is yes, I can prove it. But I'm going to prove it right now. And it goes back to the algebra we were doing when we were solving quadratic equations. Do you remember symmetry was our friend there? It's still our friend. Let me play with this equation, x squared plus 2x. y equals x squared plus 2x. I can't help but get my algebra stuff back in my head. We were drawing boxes back then, the box method. We were doing the quadrus method. Let me look at this, x squared. That really is a square, x squared, plus some extra stuff. Do you remember we were drawing big squares like this? And one of the pieces was actually going to be literally x squared, which must come from x by x. And then we kept things symmetrical. Split this into two equal parts, two x's, make it a single x and a single x. Bingo, there's two x. Uh, something times x makes x, that must be a 1. And something times x makes an x, that must be a 1. Which means the final piece must be a 1. Which is missing, I don't have it. And we said, well don't worry, make it happen. Put in a 1, add 1 on one side. Which means I better add 1 to the other side as well. So I can see now what I've really got is y plus 1 is x squared plus 2x plus 1. 
Okay, this is just a repeat of algebra from what we are doing earlier on. And why do I like x squared plus 2x plus 1? Because it's all this x squared plus 2x plus 1 is really x plus 1 by x plus 1 squared. It's actually x plus 1 as a square. So right now I've got the y plus 1 is x plus 1 as a square. Um, normally when you graph things you just say y equals stuff. So let me subtract 1 from both sides. y equals x plus 1 squared minus 1. Subtract 1 from there, subtract 1 from there. Bingo. y equals that minus 1. So we've just shown, uh, oh, oh, why am I racing it so quickly? I just need the space. But we've just shown that this is really y equals, what I say, x plus 1 squared minus 1 in disguise. There's another way of writing it. And that is what we were graphing just moments ago. That's really the y equals x squared graph with negative 1 made to look like 0. And the whole thing is shifted down 1. Okay, let me graph that. Let me, let me take the stages. I mean, we know that y equals x squared is actually just our usual y equals x squared, all the action happening at 0. Therefore, y equals x plus 1 squared is just this basic graph, but now negative 1 is behaving like 0. So it's going to be the same graph with negative 1 behaving like 0. So it's all the action is now happening at negative 1. Beautiful. But now I want y equals x plus 1 squared, take away 1. y equals x squared, x plus 1 squared, take away 1. That is, make all the heights go down 1. So take this graph and make all the heights go down 1. Take all the heights, make the graph go down 1. So negative 1 and down 1 uh, will be there, negative 1. So now I have a graph that looks like this. There it is. There it is. And look, I think it's basically the same as that pink one. Wow. This equation really was one of our basic y equals x squared graphs in disguise. It really was x plus 1 uh, squared, which is really the x squared graph with negative 1 behaving like 0, and everything was shifted down. We just basically shifted this graph over and down. Yes, this is a symmetrical U-shaped graph, which is amazing. When people say the graph of a quadratic equation is guaranteed to be, the, guaranteed to be a symmetrical U-shaped graph, do you know what? They're right. In fact, let's do another example to see that in action. Let me clean the board. We'll be back in just a moment. Okay, here's another quadratic equation. y equals x squared minus 6x plus 15. Please show that that too has a symmetrical U-shaped graph. All right, I can. I believe I can do it. I'm going to do the algebra we are doing earlier on with it. So let's look at this. We've got y equals x squared minus 6x plus 15. I want to do the box method. Let me draw the box over here, the quadrus method. Uh, it's going to be a great big box with x squared being one of the pieces, likely coming from x times x. Keep it symmetrical. A negative 6x. That means I want negative 3x and negative 3x. Keep it symmetrical. Do you remember doing this? Is it coming back in your brains now? Something times x makes negative 3x, negative 3. Something times x makes negative 3x, negative 3. Which means this piece here is negative 3 times negative 3. I want this piece to be 9. Oh, I don't have 9. I have 15. Well, make it 9. Let's subtract 6 from the right and 6 from the left then. And now I've got that y minus 6 is x squared minus 6x plus 9. Beautiful, x squared minus 6x plus 9. Why do I like that? Because that's really x minus 3 as a square. x minus 3 as a square. So y minus 6 is actually x minus 3 as a square. And therefore y, if I add 6 to the left and 6 to the right, y all by itself must be y minus, uh, x, minus 3 square, uh, x minus 3 as a square plus 6. So beautiful. We've just rewritten that equation into that equation right there. And right now, I can tell you, I can tell you that this is indeed a symmetrical U-shaped graph because this is basically just y equals x squared messed around with. I can see the number 3 is behaving like 0. I can see everything's being pushed 6 higher, 6 higher. So the graph must be this. Beautiful. Done. Done. There's the graph. Is it a symmetrical U-shaped graph? Yes, it is. By the way, by the way, people call what we just did rewriting this equation in vertex form. Sounds scary. But look, it's kind of clear vertex. What does vertex mean? Well, I haven't even used the word vertex yet. Uh, vertex must be the only special point there is in, a, in one of these graphs. People tend to call that the vertex. And look, in this form, it's very clear what the vertex is. 3 is behaving like 0, and everything's been pushed 6 high, so the vertex is at the position x equals 3, y equals 6. I'm guessing that must be vertex form. 
But look at that. Just follow your nose. Do the obvious things. I don't like the look of that. I rewrote it using the algebra and saw, oh, I do like the look of that. Yes, that is a symmetrical U-shaped graph. But you don't need the fancy language. It all actually follows from common sense. I love it. And the point is, you can actually do the same trick to actually prove, if you really want to go for the whole abstract algebra stuff, you can do exactly the same box method to prove that any equation of your life, whatever the numbers A, B, and C are, really is going to be something squared plus or minus something. There might be some steepness around, but it's going to be another one of these U-shaped graphs. So we've now discovered something amazing. Every quadratic equation has a symmetrical U-shaped graph. Now, we can actually kind of forget everything we've done so far in graphing and use that symmetry to our power and our advantage. In the next video, the next video is the one that really counts. Now that we know that things are symmetrical, let's use symmetry. It's powerful and it's our friend. So let's do it.